No, the Word of God says that we should be perfect even as He is perfect. That's in the Sermon on the Mount, right? If I'm striving for that, or I desire, that's my desire, is to be more and more like Jesus, who is perfect, right? Yes. Then think about what James wrote. James 3.2. He said, for we all stumble in many ways. Listen, that, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bride the whole body as well. James 3.2. If you don't stumble in what you say, that's really important because it's an indication of what's going on in your heart. It's an indication of what you believe. We had a dear friend in Wales who passed away a couple of years ago, Arthur Burke, at 102 years old and still traveling and preaching. And he used to say, what a man believes rules him. Now, I believe, with, I believe fully, I am convinced that what you believe will determine your choices. That will determine what you, what you choose to do, what you choose to say. And what you choose will determine your life. You make choices. Listen, you know, you have no excuses. We do things. We're, we're responsible for the things we do. And Jesus said, you are responsible for every careless word that comes out of your mouth. That's what's in your heart, all right? Also, let no unwholesome word proceed. See from, I mean, there, oh my goodness gracious, there are hundreds and hundreds of scriptures about this. And it, it really is so important. It's, this is not positive thinking. Yeah. It's not trying to create things by what you speak. It is about agreeing with God. So you come into that place of agreement that you start walking in the fullness of the word, right? What do you often, what do you most often talk about? Right? And, and you know, I, I promise you, I've said this a thousand times, so I'll say it a thousand and one. I promise you I don't say anything for judgment. What I'm saying I say for encouragement. The word says, examine yourself. What do you talk about the most? Because that's, that is what's in your heart. It reveals the abundance of your heart. Then let me go back to where we started. The highest command, the foremost command, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Now that that's what's radical. Because this is what this is this is okay, well, you know, I, it's part time. Christianity is not part time. Following Jesus Christ, being led by the Spirit of God, that's not a part time occupation. It is full time. David, listen, David, a man after God's own heart, he was quite the sinner, don't you know? But he also had a heart that was always quick to repent. And he prayed, create me a clean heart, O oh Lord. He trusted in God to do that work in his life. And that's what we need to be. We need to know, you know, we can't do this on our own. But we can choose to surrender to God who is doing the work in our lives, okay? And it's something that we should pray daily because we get contaminated every day out in the world. Because that's a sewer out there. Yeah. So, I mean, that's sad to say, but it is absolutely the truth, yes. okay? So that brings me to this statement that I want to make. True Christianity is a consuming obsession. You know, for what, what, what has happened over the the centuries over the millennia is that Christianity has basically been become uh, a, a comfortable. We've developed a culture of comfort in Christianity by adding things to our life that are comfortable. That's that sounds nice. We're, we're creatures of comfort. Yeah. That said, if we have, as the song says, decided to follow Jesus, you better remember that if we claim to follow the King of Kings. Who chose to come as Ebed Yahweh, the servant of God, the suffering servant. That's what it says in Isaiah over and over, right? He who was born in a manger and later said, The foxes have dens and the birds of the air have, have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, right? He was called insane by his own family. You know that? His own family said, He's lost his senses. The religious leaders said, He's demon possessed. This is the one that we've chosen to follow, right? He was, he was mocked by the world, executed as a common criminal, and we're to imitate him. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. That's what it says in Ephesians 5.1. He did all those things, but you know what he did? He always, always was perfectly serving the will of God, his Father. Because he didn't do or say anything that he hadn't heard from his father. He didn't, he didn't speak anything on his own. That's what it says in John 12. 
He didn't do anything that the father hadn't told him and shown him to do. That's created me a clean heart, oh God. As I sing your word, thy word is strength, thy word is power, your word is kind, and your word is true, thy word is a lamp unto my feet.